Yes guys, what's happening? Welcome back here to Rush Athletics TV and thanks for tuning in to my new series called How to Jump Rope Like Floyd Mayweather. It's going to be taking his style because that's the style that I learned, it's the style that I incorporate myself and if you follow the series along, give me your feedback in your comments, what you'd like to see uh, and I'll take it from there. So without further ado, let's start off with the type of jump rope. Right, so I'm here now with the jump rope that the money man uses, Floyd Mayweather. Very, very simple jump rope here, guys. It's nothing too fancy, nothing too sophisticated. We're looking at the Ampro Boxing Speed Rope here. It's the yellow one as used by himself. Plastic handles here. Again, like I said, nothing too fancy. You can adjust, if you can see right there, you can adjust the, the length of it by adjusting this little piece here. Alternatively, what you can do is you can put some knots in it. It's good to mention here the materials. So you can get different types of materials with, with skipping ropes. You can get the CrossFit styles. Uh, maybe I'll make another video on, on these different types of ropes which can help you, but just for this time being, let's go through this one. So we've got a vinyl type of coating here. You can see, very simplistic. Guys, it's only cost about six or seven pounds. You're looking maybe at Amazon, anything online, amproboxing.com, um, eight or nine dollars if you're in the US. So very inexpensive uh, piece of equipment and you've got to get this in your gym bag. Highly recommend this rope, guys. As you'll see from the videos coming up, you can see the speed of this is very good. The weight is very good. Uh, it's brilliant for beginners. This is the first rope that I picked up when I was trying to skip uh, about a year ago and when I was trying to follow the techniques that I saw from Mayweather. So this is the best rope and it is used by him. Cool, so you got the rope. You just now need to measure it, get it to your own height and make it optimal for your jumping. So let's do that now. What you need to do, first of all, this is the number one method. This is the number one method that most people will show you online. You step back. I don't know if you can see this. You step into the middle of the rope. Hopefully you can see. You put it up towards the side of your body. And you want to get it up maybe around your armpit. No, did you? <laughs> so you have to put it like this, you have to do it like that. Like that. Do my tutorial. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so you step into the middle of the rope, you lift it up by the sides, and if it comes up to about the armpits, then you know it's roughly the right height for yourself. So this is the one way that the internet will probably show you, most places will show you is the best way to measure the size of your rope, the length of your rope. Cool. So to adjust it, like I said before, you can put a knot in. I would suggest putting the knot quite close to the handle. Put it tight. If you put it too far down the rope, it's just going to obviously catch on the floor or underneath your feet. So get the knot near the handle. Next step, you've got your rope, you got the measurement right, you just want to start jumping, right? You're wrong. Next step. Cool. So we got your rope, you're ready to jump. What we're going to do though, before we start jumping, we're going to show you a quick technique how to get your rhythm right. This is really important and you'll see Mayweather doing the same thing when he's just warming up, when he's just ready to go. What we're going to do is we're going to get the rope in one hand. We're going to put our index finger through the middle of the ropes, as you can see. So, I'm predominantly right-handed, so this is how it's going to go. We're going to point the right wrist upwards. The rope's going to go forward. And what we're going to think about is having our elbows tucked in to our sides. We don't want them out here. We want them by the sides nice and comfortable. And we want the wrist to do the work. So we want the wrist to be the motor of this action. We don't want the shoulder or a lot of forearm. We just want the wrist to do the work. So we're going to pull with the rope. So it's going anti-clockwise, spacing upwards. And what we're going to do is, we're going to hear that clicking sound on the floor. That's going to be our rhythm. As it hits the floor, that's when we're going to do a jump. So, the important thing to remember is we keep our body up, right? Chest out, back straight. We're going to listen out for this click. This click is going to be our mental rhythm. And like I said, the motor is the wrist. The wrist is the motor, not a lot of work with the shoulders, so it's going to be 
nice and comfortable, the side angle, you're going to have the elbow facing backwards. So hopefully you can see that. The tendency for most people is they start jumping and they start jumping with their arms wide out. And that's definitely not the right technique and it's going to put a lot of stress on your shoulders, it's not going to feel comfortable, uh, it doesn't look as exquisite, it doesn't look as good. What you're going to do is just keep it nice and natural, elbows facing back, as you can see, elbows facing back and a lot of the movement, a lot of the movement comes from the wrist, right? So it's the wrist that controls the rope and as it hits the floor, that's when we get that jump. And you'll notice that your body understands this rhythm so quickly that you don't even jump that high off the floor. We're not doing jumps like this. We're not doing jumps extremely high for no reason. We're listening out for that rhythm. And your body will jump nicely to the point where it feels comfortable. You get a nice burn in your calves. And if you want to look at the side angle, you want to be on the balls of your feet. At all times when you're skipping, at most times anyway, you want to be on the balls of your feet. That's when you get the biggest workout on your legs, on your calves, and it's the right technique. You don't want to be always on, on your heels or flat footed. That's going to put a lot, of, a lot of pressure, a lot of strain on your knees. Unnecessary as well. So, once we're comfortable with this position, with your wrist pointing upwards, we're going to move the wrist now to the other side of our body. And now, the wrists are all pointing point to the floor. So, palms facing up. The rope is going in the same direction forward, but now it's going clockwise, our wrist action. Yeah? So before, we're going anti-clockwise. Now we're going clockwise with our wrists. And the arm going across you, you just do the same. Start jumping like this. Okay? And you can see again, as we switch now from side to side, your body will take a bit of time to get used to this action because as you can see you're having to use different muscles in your body we're doing a bit of shoulder rotation coming across you've got a bit of forearm working you've got the wrist working and your body's jumping in time and in rhythm so it's going to take a bit of time for your body to adjust your brain to kind of process all these different types of movement but believe me, this is the beginning and this is the way to start jumping ropes, the way to start skipping well, the best technique. The worst, pe the worst that people can do is actually get the rope and all of a sudden start jumping and again, the technique's wrong, they jump with their knees bent, jumping too high unnecessarily. With this technique, and you'll, you'll, see, you'll see Mayweather jumping like this, at the beginning, or most of his workouts, he starts with the one-arm swing and he moves from side to side. And you can see, he's not just doing that for the sake of looking good, it's a way to get the body warmed up, getting, it, getting the rhythm into shape, getting, getting the rhythm kind of into action, warming it all up, and then he goes into the whole skipping and, and into the routine. So it's a nice way to, to just start off. Right, so the final portion of this is now, we found our rhythm uh, with the one arm swings. I'm going to show you how to kind of um, kind of experiment with different footwork, uh, different types of kind of movements and then that will bring us to a close to how to get started with your jump rope. So, we've gone through the one arm swing, moving it to the other side of the body, we've got used to the wrist rotation, we've got the jumps in sync. Next step is we're just going to mess around, we're going on one, one leg, so you just lift up one knee and we're just going to jump nice and calmly on one leg. Remember to stay on the balls of your feet, body nice and upright. So if you see it from the side view, come a little bit closer. Elbows back. Okay. Then we're gonna just change leg. Now, why this is important? Because again, a lot of the transitions, a lot of the moves that we're gonna be doing, we're gonna be moving from different legs. And again, you see this in Mayweather's types of skills, his, his types of moves, his trademark moves. He goes from one leg to the other very, very quickly. So we're going to try and imitate the same. So we're going to get the body, we're going to get the muscle memory in the body and the legs to do the same. So this is how we start. We're then going to go into a run. So 
So here, you can hear the click, 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 click. Get that in your brain. Every time the rope hits the floor, we lift the leg. Okay, so one leg up at a time. And then this is the run. Okay, so just the final word now. So now you're used to your rhythm. You've got your speed, you've got your wrist movement, you've got your body nice and straight, you've got your elbows tucked in, your arms facing forwards so and not facing outwards, your legs are jumping nicely, minimally, minimal kind of elevation off the ground, to get the maximum burn in your calves, you stay on the balls of your feet, again nice and composed, remember you're breathing, so I'm already out of breath doing this, but breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth, expand the lungs as you're skipping. So, last but not least, we're going to actually do some skipping, we're going to do some jumping, we're going to do it like you know it, the usual way, rope in both hands, and we're just going to do the same that we've just been doing with the one hand, but again now the, the rope's been passing through us, underneath us, and you just want to keep that same rhythm, so let's do a bit of that and that will conclude this video. See, I'm jumping with my knees bent, coming, crashing down on the floor, putting a lot of stress on my knees. It's just very simple. Nice burn in the calves. No pain in the shoulders. All the speed of the rope is coming from the wrists. So we're just going to do the footwork that we learned, so the one leg. And then the run. Get the right rope, the right rope length. You then want to get the right rhythm. After you've got your rhythm, you want to train your body to kind of remember that rhythm. It's your own personal speed, it's your own personal style. Remember at the end of the day, we can't all have the same speed, we can't have the same kind of types of movement. Everyone's going to look slightly different. Uh, and then thirdly, you want to just, like I said, breathe well, posture right, elbows back, by your side, nice small jumps just to get started. Uh, and there you go, you're on your way. So keep tuned for the next one, we're going to start building it up and we're going to come to you know, more advanced moves, things that will get the heart really, really pumping. But this episode was just to kind of give you a taste of how you could get started and making sure you get started without making the kind of most common mistakes that a lot of people do. Uh, most common mistakes that I've seen regularly anyway in the gym. So leave your comments and feedback below. I'm happy to answer any questions and stay tuned for the next one.